Okay. So, not too much audience, but uh, let's start. <laughs> <laughs> In quality. Quality. Yes. Quality. Yes. <laughs> so, I hope we have uh, people uh, seeing us all online as well. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, Welcome to, to, to our panel. We're going to talk about scaling Blue Tech Innovation Hubs. Uh, my name is Pedro Rocha Vieira. I'm the CEO and co-founder of BTI. We are a collaborative innovation consult uh, based in Portugal, but with offices in, in, in Brazil and Bel <coughs> Belgium, and uh, also now in, in, in Boston. Uh, and um, today, we're going to discuss uh, how to, to, to scale the innovation hubs. Betty, we have been working in the last 12 years a lot about how to build ecosystems of innovation and, and the technology uh, in different industri industries. And, uh, and the ocean is a topic that we really focus a lot. Uh, we are uh, we were strong believers that Portugal can be a major uh, ecosystem and hub uh, uh, globally. But uh, I'm a true believer that, that in order to promote uh, strong clusters more and more, uh, the, the concept of clusters they are quite can be much broader. And so, and we have to to think how to collaborate with other ecosystems and with other players in order to to scale innovation. And if it, there is a sector that I believe that the, this kind of collaboration makes sense is uh, on the ocean because ocean is a, a common asset that we, we all share and is a, and we are here at the UN Ocean Conference also is an, an asset that, that needs to be uh, preserved and developed in a very in a sustainable way so for that really demands uh, 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 a, a, a common action in terms of how to preserve and how to develop in a, in a sustainable way so uh, but there's a lot of, of times these words are vague uh, maybe that's why we don't have too much <laughs> <laughs> audience <laughs> uh, but but so a lot of times it comes how, how what's really the, the the, the strategy that we need to, to take uh, in order to, to promote this kind of collaboration. Mm -hmm. on where to start, where to focus, what are the priorities, how really to, 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 to promote uh, healthier and sustainable ecosystems and, and, and transnational cooperation. So uh, today we have uh, with us uh, five uh, incredible speakers. It's going to be a challenging uh, panel because we have uh, uh, more, uh, 40 minutes to, to, to conclude. So we have we have Matt uh, Clayson. It's the executive director of the TMA Blue Tech. Um, Blue Tech uh, is a is a based in San Diego, so it's one of the most dynamic clusters in the U.S. He is also uh, the coordinator of uh, of the Global Clusters Alliance. So it brings us the perspective both of a strong ecosystem in the U.S. but also this vast uh, global network. Then we have Lisa Peterson. Uh, she is the co-founder and executive director of Sea Ahead. So it's a blue tech startup platform founded in Boston. And uh, she will bring us the perspective of the, the New England uh, blue tech ecosystem, both from a, a startup, from an investment, and also a, an impact perspective. Um, and then we have Flavio Andrade with us. And, and, uh, and uh, Flavio is the president and co-founder of Ocean Pact, a service company for the sustainable use of the, of the sea. Uh, and uh, and uh, based in, in Brazil, it's a very large company that provides multiple services to the to the uh, maritime sector. Uh, and so she will bring us a lot to this perspective of, 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 of the market and especially the more traditional economy. Then we have Kendra uh, over there, uh, Kendra McDonald's. She is the, the CEO of Ocean uh, Supercluster from Canada. And so, so she'll bring the perspective of this broader national cluster from, from Canada, one of the most uh, dynamic countries in the world and when it comes to blue economy. We have then finally Ruben Aires, which is the general secretary of Forum Ocean. It's the Portuguese blue economy cluster. Uh, he's also the former uh, director general of the Portuguese maritime policy, so someone with also a vast experience in the in this area and a very good uh, partner uh, who, and of, of uh, we, we collaborate. We are associate members of, of Oceano and we do a lot of things together, especially the ASPAN and Blue Tech Accelerator and, and many others. So, first, I'll, I'll ask you very brief to introduce yourselves and your organizations in one two minutes. So we, we can start with uh, with with, uh, with Matt. Very good. Uh, thank you very much, Pedro. Um, great to be here. Matt Klassen with uh, TMA Bluetech, uh, like Pedro said, out of San Diego. Uh, we're based on a triple uh, helix uh, model, which is basically bringing together uh, industry, government, and academia 
to, uh, to further promote the, uh, the blue economy and blue tech specifically in our region. Thank you. Hi, yes, uh, Alyssa Peterson. Uh, I work through Sea Ahead to help grow the blue tech cluster out of New England area and now also in the Gulf Coast out of Mississippi. And our, our work centers around the idea of bringing more financial resources to startups in the blue economy space. And so uh, through our work, we have an incubator and accelerator now out of Mississippi, and we also invest through our, um, our Blue Angels initiative. Thank you, Lisa. And Flavio? Hello, thank you. So I'm Flavio Andrade. I'm a naval architect and marine engineer. And I started uh, maybe 15 years ago a company called Ocean Pact. We have now uh, more than 30 vessels working uh, in Brazil, and maybe one third of these vessels are working on the environmental area, another third on subsea services, and we work for the uh, old blue economy, I was uh, saying, so the offshore oil industry, shipping, ports and terminals, and that's it. Thank you. Yeah, so Canada's Ocean Supercluster is an industry-led national cluster in Canada, and we are really focused on growing the ocean economy for Canada with solutions that are digital, uh, sustainable, and inclusive. We have over 500 members and over 70 projects with over $350 million in project value. And finally, Ruben. Okay, Ruben Aires, Secretary General of Foro Ocean. What is Foro Ocean? We are the Portuguese Blue Economy Cluster. We represent 136 members from all sectors of the economy, so we are multi-sectorial. Uh, and we uh, represent about 50% of the blue GDP in Portugal. We are so aiming at, at getting, getting the other 50% or creating the other 50%. <laughs> so let's, let's start the, 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 the panel. Uh, my first question goes to, to Matt. And uh, um, so, leveraging on the experience that TMA Blue Tech has in terms of, of uh, this Global Clusters Alliance, uh, what do you see as the, the major the challenges, challenges that uh, the different uh, clusters, the clusters uh, share? And, uh, what do you think you want to see the most challenges? That's a, a, an interesting question. It's a broad one. and. Um, I'd really be really curious to know what the, the panel, panel thinks as well, because this is, a, you know, we don't have a ton of people here, so it'd be nice to have a conversation as well. I'd like to learn from you all as well what you think. Um, I think, you know, some of the, the, I mean, the common challenges is that I see it is that uh, we don't, um, there's not like a common area of uh, collaboration that we could have. And so while we do say that we collaborate, um, I think if we could have a, a particular focus and say we want to go after this, and that's, that's kind of difficult because there are so many, so many areas on which we could collaborate that are so important for a sustainable ocean. So uh, just to be able to have maybe one, two, or three particular areas of focus that we could, uh, that we could do, and then to have some measurables behind that as well, and then to judge ourselves based on those measurables, that could be very, very helpful. And so, um, that's what I can say about that. I'm not sure if I answered the entire question, but uh, yeah. it's a good start. I completely agree with Matt. We must have focus. focus. No, no, no. Uh, we, have we have to have. have uh, an agenda, agenda because, because um, uh, and really and deliver on that, on, on that agenda. Uh, uh, as, as I said, when we were pre presenting, all of us are multi-sectorial. Uh, and this is, uh, and the, here the challenge is, what can be the transversal challenge that we have 
so we can uh, deliver something that is not free. Uh, for example, we're talking about digitization. This is something that is really important. Canada is doing a very important movement in that area. It's very important for solving uh, management problems of uh, uh, impact problems, uh, negative impact problems for all industries, but also for the management of maritime space, which is key for blue community to thrive in a sustainable way. So just, just that. So having common agenda in digitization between the two of them inside the blue tech cluster alliance and cooperation, that would be in the, in the terms of the you know, product, that would be something to move on. Then I'll move to Alisa, and more moving from a global perspective from your experience, experience in the new events, events uh, which is the people state. Uh, you have a uh, very work with different cities and different partners. So, so what have been the, the challenges in, in gaining critical mass uh, around the different topics and priorities of the blue economy? And what have been your strategies to, you know, to ignite that critical mass and to really create a strong trust in our community? So we felt like it was, like it was important, important to have a cluster in New England because that's one of the core innovation centers in the U.S. And so uh, we felt if, if this space was going to really grow, we needed to activate the innovation community out of Boston to apply their skill sets to the challenges faced by the innovation. And so by... Uh, the, the, the biggest, biggest challenge that we had to start, start with is that nobody had heard, heard of it. it. And, and so, so we, we really, we really had, had to spend a lot of upfront time educating the community, the community around, around what we were trying to accomplish, why, why it wasn't all just philanthropy, uh, because, uh, because, because that was that the was immediate, immediate reaction we got, like, oh, well, that's, that's what I give what my money to for charity. Like, this is not a business. And so that was really frustrating. Like, the shipping industry is enormous, right? Like, the fishing, these are really big opportunities, opportunities but, but they, they the, the, the folks who were, were innovators, innovators couldn't connect, connect with, with uh, and, didn't and didn't see a connection, see a connection for them to those, uh, those uh, industry sectors. sectors. And so that's, so what, that's we what we spent a lot of our, 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 our upfront up time gaining, gaining their, um, an understand, understand, getting an understanding within the, within within the tech, tech sector of this of being an opportunity. And now one of the things that we're noticing, which is our original goal, is that the mentors that have been part of our community are now starting, starting their, their own companies, companies. Right? right? And so, so I think, I think for, for, for us, a key a success key metric is, is, is having, having um, talented, talented executives from other, other sectors, sectors starting, starting to bring their, their skill sets, sets into this sector. sector. Yeah. Because, if because if we're going, going to, grow to grow and flourish the innovation, innovation community within Blue, we, we, we need more of those people to come in and we need to welcome them coming in and not create artificial walls to say like, oh, well, this is not, you're not in this space. You know, you you didn't, because we need people who are, you know, you know, you know whose skill, skill sets, sets are in digital. digital. We need people whose skill, skill sets came, came out of clean tech and material, and material science, science, et cetera. Et cetera. It's, it's not, not only about marine science. 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 So, so what, what, building on, on what, 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 what uh, is, 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 is science? You, 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 you come from the uh, uh, science and work a lot of services of the corporation. And so, Sector. So, 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 from your experience, what, 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 what do you think is the biggest challenge that the industry faces at the moment? And what would be the uh, in order to facilitate us to align incentives between the traditional and the new players of the ecosystem to make more viable ecosystems? Well, thank you for the question. Thank you, Lisa, and also Matt. I think we. we, we we have an interesting uh, experience in, in putting together uh, innovation developed many times from startups and, and, and managing to put them into real operations uh, very fast. So, so for example, with, with TMA, in the very beginning of our membership there, we found uh, a drone that could take off and land from a moving vessel without an experienced pilot. And very quickly we developed an idea of identifying oil slicks and, and we managed to, to buy my equipment and put this to work and have our final customers pay pay pay. So that's when I, many times I come back to this point thinking that the real uh, 
guys that are using the ocean now, so it's oil and gas, shipping, fisheries, they make the, the, the money to, to, to sponsor and to foster innovation, because they also need innovation to comply with their own commitment uh, to, 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 to decarbonization, do that at a certain day. So I think that the environment allow a very good opportunity for and help lower the costs for getting to know the oceans. So the Prince of Spain was mentioning that the deep oceans are vastly unknown and that it's very expensive to research in deep waters. But at the same time, the oil industry is really in very deep waters. So we, we, for example, have all the tools to do whatever kind of research in very, very important water, 3,000 meters of water that as of now. So we could use these resources better and share data and information. And this data sharing uh, is amazing. And these initiatives, like, like also the Hub Ocean Shangin region, so has a common platform where data can be shared. And the industry must, of course, learn how to share stuff. They, 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 they know that it's not a competitive advantage and can be very, very useful for many others. Also, fishers tend not to like sharing that. But it, it's not difficult to convince them to have their vessels as a sensor, as a carrier sensor. So the world understands that an innovation can work with that and that. So I think this is the kind of collaboration that uh, I would like to happen, and hopefully this event will, will, will help to so these weeks we have. We cannot compete with each other, and, uh, and that uh, uh, keeps us from uh, uh, optimizing our full potential. So, in your experience, how can we really uh, bring the national ecosystem together in order to that kind of collaboration that can really uh, uh, allow us to, to, to have synergies and to scale innovation? So, so Canada is a big, big, big geography, and uh, there is regional competition, and there will always be regional interests. Um, and so one of the challenges for the supercluster was not to become one more competitor in, in a busy landscape, and it's increasingly busy landscape. Um, I, I would say, I was saying earlier that the pandemic, as much as it had a lot of very negative effects on the ocean economy, I think making the country smaller was one of the benefits. So then our members could see coast-to-coast-to-coast -coast 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 collaboration and international collaboration in a new way because everything felt uh, much smaller. So we really focused on where could the national cluster provide value because we need strong regional hubs, you need density and specific locations. You can't just have sort of an umbrella organization that seems that you're going to get the momentum that you're looking for. So there were there a few places, and one of them was certainly around that connection. So we, are, we have over 500 members. We have our Ocean Asset Map, which has close to 4,000 organizations. And so we really try, although we are a small team, to connect and help any clusters build on what's already going on. So either something that the, the super cluster is doing or something that we're aware of in another nation cluster, so that every organization is able to build rather than the So with the momentum that we need for our ocean, we can't be doing the same thing over and over again. I think that 
that, that matters for Canada, I think it matters globally as well. These are big challenges, and so how do we learn from each other? How do we build up each other? How do we connect to the that we're already doing? The other big one was around, as we mentioned earlier, awareness and association. And so our smaller local regions, um, they don't have the, the bandwidth and the communication um, funds to be able to really create a brand. And so one of the things I think the Super Cluster has done is create a brand for Ocean Ocean Canada that now all of those organizations can plug and benefit from. And the last thing is the Super Cluster has its own funding. So sometimes, you now are we a cluster, are we a funding agency? At the end of the day, the funding allows us to build a cluster faster than we would have been able to do if we had to look for the, look for the funding for the initiatives that we wanted to do. And that's allowed us to do much quicker. And when you have funding, that allows you to do it. Well, uh, first of all, uh, the asset is in itself. So we have 97% of our territory is ocean uh, and a very deep ocean. Uh, also, but um, um, uh, this um, distinction, um, it has in the, in the same uh, area uh, several types of marine ecosystems. So, so the diversity of, uh, of the ecosystem is, you know, uh, considerable, which for, for example, blue bioeconomy industry, that brings, you know, the potential for, for diversity in the areas of aquaculture, and also in the, uh, in the areas of the potential for the, bio, the biotech dimension in that, in, in that diversity. Uh, also another characteristic is the kind of ocean that we have. Uh, it's a very rough sea. Uh, it's in some areas, like in the north, it's really, you know, tough. So when the tech is designed, it has to deliver on the harshest conditions. So, so if it works here, here, it works here, everywhere, in a, way, in, a way, in a way of saying it. You see that, for example, by, by the wind float Atlantic uh, 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 pilot that is going on in, uh, in Vienna de it, it is able to deliver and produce electricity, the floating offshore wind, even with 14 meters waves. Uh, uh, you know, going on. And, but, it is the product of international collaboration. It is linking uh, minds and talent between California and Portugal. Principal power, it all uh, 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 was born like this. So, again, uh, you know, uh, we have a good asset here. So, again, that it's, it's in the, its diversity, also in its harshness for designing solutions that then can be deployed in, in, in other areas, but also the way. You know we work, and the way the the you know the ecosystem is growing is very open in, in, in that dimension. Uh, and of course, also we have here the, another opportunity uh, uh, is the new cycle of, of EU funds that will bring you know fresh you know public money into uh, into the area. 
and most of this and a big uh, uh, part of this fund in the recovery of the wine will be to build the Blue Hub, where uh, Formosian was, you know, uh, designated by the Portuguese government with the privilege, but also with the, the high responsibility of fostering the business model and the internationalization of the, of the Blue Hub. Seven open innovation centers in all the ports, a multi-sectorial, and one Blue Hub school for you know, building uh, for training what will be another new Blue Expert. And this also comprises similar structures in the archipelagos of Madeira and Azores. Should not forget islands. Islands are very, very important and are a key uh, 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 aspect in deploying, especially the ocean observation technologies and the digital technologies for managing maritime space. So if we add up and to be uh, uh, very uh, transposer, what Canada for them is doing very well this uh, uh, in organizing the ecosystem. Canada benefits also in the, with the relation with the EU because we already have an, an agreement. Canada is, uh, now is part of the Eureka you know, network. In case of the, of the United States, there is a lot of capital that, uh, and they have a, a very dynamic Ca uh, uh, capital market that is not, you know, such a dynamic as here in here we have a more uh, traditional niche venture investment. Well, you can come here and and you know have the context for you know igniting and accelerating the deployment of that capital in certain solutions with this kind of context where you can scale up technologies faster in the technological side. And here, one last remark about the scalability and also the credibility of technology is the industrial certification of the technologies that are produced in the, in the ecosystem. This is something that not, is not more, uh, I would say, uh, uh, initially is not about, but it's very important that the innovation ecosystem, when the pilots are there, you know, they come with the right in that uh, certification for technologies to be credible for it. Well, most of our members are smaller organizations, and they are looking to get a foothold in the market, and they join, and uh, they need buyers. They need people who buy their solutions, and so our job is to go and promote those uh, individual solutions that they provide, and then hopefully uh, find them buyers. Um, you know, so uh, trying to make the San Diego region known as a place where blue tech and blue tech innovation is happening in order to attract the kind of uh, capital interest that would be able to invest in these companies and uh, also to help find them buyers and to promote them. Those are uh, some of the challenges we face and, you know, I wish we could uh, say that we have a lot of um, uh, capital interests who are specifically in blue tech, but that's also kind of a challenge is that uh, not many are. So yeah, one side we have to find buyers and the other side where these companies need to have some investment capital. And so, you know, finding the investment capital is a challenge, but also finding buyers as well. So what we're trying to do uh, at the San Diego region is uh, create like an innovation um, engine hub. Um, and that attracts capital, that attracts interest. Uh, we, we like to say that we're, we're trying to form um, a Silicon Valley for, for Blue Tech because we have all the resources there to make this happen. Uh, a lot of people don't know what the blue economy is. You know, they don't realize that there's a three trillion uh, valuation uh, by 2030. So there's real money there. And so we're trying to promote that industry overall through the lens of innovation and then try to channel in uh, buyers and, uh, and, and capital interest to be able to invest in those technologies to help them scale. So basically we're just trying to be like the, the, the scaling innovation engine
engine that makes it all happen for people. But um, you know, like the challenge, as I said, you know, is, is the awareness of what the blue economy is and how much it's valued at, where the, the money could be coming from, and that yes, there are buyers out there that uh, would be able to use these uh, these these technologies. So um, I could go on about uh, you know a couple of our. Uh, uh, members. Uh, I mentioned one um, at the previous stage. Um, his name is uh, uh, Yi Chao, and he's with C-Track over here, and he provides a technology that uh, is, is basically a battery and based on temperature differentials in the ocean. It goes up and down and up and down, and that creates power. And you can put these batteries around uh, platforms so they don't have to ship in uh, um, expensive crude oil or uh, fuel. And so basically that's lowering the carbon footprint and increasing you know, uh, de de decreasing costs for the platforms. So who knows about this kind of thing? You know, so we have to go out and tell people, you know, and promote this kind of technology. So there could be some additional funding coming in. There could be buyers for the platforms. So that's that's a challenge we have is to be able to, to really promote these things at a, at a level that's effective. And again, to cap it off. Just to be able to promote San Diego Reason as an innovation engine hub, which is where people want to come and look for these solutions and maybe be able to invest if possible. That is what uh, we're doing and some of the challenges involved as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. A lot of people keep saying that we are like, uh, 10 years ago, uh, was the, the clean tech industry. Uh, so now everyone understands the value of 10 years ago. Uh, uh, at least, at least, at least mentioned earlier that when you start to the challenge of the challenge, to, 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 to clarify that, that value, to, to, to differentiate what it would impact investors or, or share it to different impact investors, share it to money from, 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 from uh, return to uh, a more decent perspective. But, but, uh, the, the, the ocean, the blue economy, is a sector that uh, I, I see that the intersection of investment investment with the normal VCs has to be very, very, very interconnected as the development of the system has to be sustainable. In fact, investment is growing a lot around the world, one third of the funds are in fact investment. So, based on your experience, how can we bring together more and more the, these two ecosystems that the traditional impact investment is? It's a big, big question. <laughs> but, uh, I, I, I would say our thesis is that if we can demonstrate that there are opportunities with good returns on investment in the ocean sector, that more money will come into the sector. And so, the way that we've gone about doing that is by pulling together, to start with, a group of angel investors. Um, and that was a way for us to put capital to work quickly because we didn't have to raise a fund in order to start uh, getting our community investing in the, in the startups. So our angel investors have uh, invested in 14 companies now over the last two years. Uh, one of them is actually c -Trek. Um So that's, uh, <laughs> that's good. Um, and so, uh, so we have uh, uh, through that work, work facilitated, facilitated uh, you know, you know, quite, quite a, a number of number investments, investments, and some of them have had up, up rounds now. Uh, one, one of the deals that we did last year, year uh, Beta, Beta Hatch, Hatch has already, already uh, had an up uh, round. That's, that's a company, a company that, that is, is investing, investing uh, where, where we're investing, we're investing in, in the creation in of um, um, alternative feed for for feeding aquaculture fish, those insects, and in that way, reducing the amount of wild fish that is needed for aquaculture and also for uh, for feeding uh, land-based agriculture too. So they're, uh, they start in chicken. And so uh, that that is a really, imp uh, we think a really important area where it's both a growth industry and it has uh, you know, potential for great impact on the ocean. And so that's what we look for. We look for, um, as uh, within Sea Ahead, what we're looking for is impact as a first screen, right? So everything's got to go through the impact screen. But once it falls through the impact screen, it needs, it needs to have, have a good a investment, investment thesis, thesis as well. And so, um, so that's, that's, that's the kind of opportunities that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. 
the carbonation is a universal challenge of the great ways that take the level of the globalized and the actors. But if you, if you, if you try to identify areas that are really you know, you know, need a lot of innovation, you have like one or two key industries that are really using a lot of innovation. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think uh, uh, mentioning uh, principal power, so the, the offshore wind uh, uh, is, is picking up in, in the east coast of the United States, and, and now in Brazil they start preparing the regulation for, for, for that, and we have already several layers of, of candidates for the best areas in, in shallower waters with good wind potential, let's say. So, so, so technology for uh, having these accurate data uh, is for sure one, one of those. And back on the decarbonization, I think that, that uh, we, we believe that the solution will, will not be one. So we have investments in Canada on direct capture of carbon. We have mangrove reforestation happening in Africa, in Asia. We, are, we have a small pilot project in Brazil in mangrove reforestation and, and measuring in a cheap and, and reliable and sellable and, and confirmed uh, manner will we, we demand lots of investments. And, and I think there is money for, for that. And another uh, standpoint is, is, is the shipping industry. So are we changing food? So how, how long will ships use uh, uh, heavy oil? Heavy oil. So there are several studies with uh, ammonia that would be a, a better way to carry hydrogen or, or hydrogen. Or, what will be the transition in biofuels, yes or no? So there are lots of challenges and lots of experimentation and innovation is needed in all the sectors. But I think that energy and, and knowing how to use these energy on a, on a good uh, uh, spatial management of, of, of the oceans so the coastal zone is not the, the only prob problem. Uh, Points to be addressed, but also offshore. So, so understanding all this, having the right tools and the right communication, so society as a whole is, uh, demands a good action. So, in the previous panel, we were mentioning the deep water fishers. Are we ready for that? Do we, we want these fishes where we, we still don't know what kind of biodiversity is, is in there? So I think that the spatial planning of, of, of the ocean habitats and, and areas is critical as well. So there are lots of opportunities and, and, and it's very interesting to, to talk about funding. So in Brazil, of course, we know that we have lots of other challenges, huge challenges as a society. But, but the oil industry is supposed to invest 1% of their total revenues in innovation. So this is already in place. The only thing needed is to, to broaden this innovation and, and, and direct this to what needs to be done. Not necessarily innovation on how to drill a better well, but maybe innovation on how to, 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 to follow the decarbonization goals. And, and how to develop the next energy from the sea. So it's uh, offshore wind or waves or energy or temperature differences, whatever it is to be, we need to study and develop the right tools for that. Thank you. Uh, so, so talking about funding and uh, Kendra, you mentioned earlier that one of the main trade teams that super fast out there is the funding perspective. But what, what in your experience is, should be the the extension of public funding to create a healthy and sustainable ecosystem and to promote the public and private uh, partnership in terms of European funding. And, and if you can add also, although we don't have a short time, uh, also to promote uh, public funding for international collaboration. Yeah, so, you know, we're, 
where government invests from an innovation perspective matters, and we've seen that around the world, and we're seeing that certainly in Canada. So the fact that we are investing in the new economy and we are multi-sectoral, we are seeing an increase in overall activity in the economy. So that is certainly one of the reasons that government plays. And part of the role of the, the Super Cluster Program, or what is now the Global Innovation Cluster Program, uh, is to change Canada's reputation as an innovation nation more broadly. I think the other role that government plays, which is incredibly important, is as a customer. And so, at the, whether that's at the municipal level or provincial level for us, or at a federal level, uh, for companies to be able to point to the fact that they have a customer and government is acting as a customer, that's not easy. Government can be slow as a client, etc. But when they can do that and do that well, that is very, very powerful for companies as they um, for global opportunities. I think, you know, similar to what I talked about at a Canadian level, where you've got regional interests and we need to figure out what are the things that we can do together, I think it's the same thing globally. So we are a national program, we're focused on national interests, we invest for Canadian benefit, that's what we're doing with with government dollars and taxpayer dollars. But at the same time, I think there's, there's, we are one ocean and we're interconnected in what other countries do matters. And so how do we marry programs in other countries with our program to be able to encourage bigger collaboration and more transformational projects and to the benefit of, of all of the participants in this industry. So I think certainly for me, that's what I've we just got new funding. So that's what I'm looking at from 2.0 is to say, how do we scale? What is going on in Canada and connected to what's going on globally in the United States. So the last question here on the verge of the hour. Proven. Uh, for us, Yana has been very involved in, in linking what was in the venture in, uh, in uh, European consortium and, and the European Commission. Funding. You mentioned also that, that also at the Portuguese level, this is something that is growing a lot. So, from our perspective, what, what could be done in order to leverage the best, better the, uh, this public funding really to address the, the common challenge that the economic system has? You know, no, building on what Kendra uh, uh, has uh, said, you know, you have to focus uh, in the network of networks. This is kind of also the spirit of the Blue Tech Cluster Wine, mm -hmm. network of networks. Uh, so, and that also not totally because of the clusters, you know, uh, acting collectively in themselves, but also with the other actors of the ecosystem. So, 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 what does this mean? We have to partner with the accelerators. We have to partner with the incubators. We have to partner with the technology tech. We have to partner with the, 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 the community of investors, understand what they are searching for, uh, and also uh, try to uh, uh, hack as an honest broker of the ecosystem at the end of the day. So this is the, so the, the pivot role that we need to upgrade in, 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 our, in, in our action. And also by our nature, because we are ourselves as clusters. Uh, we are the, the sum of our members. Uh, so what we need to do here is try to articulate this. How do you do that? I think, you know, like the, uh, you know, the initiative that we are you know, building together, uh, and so there are several actors here that are strategic partners, like Supros, Ocean Cluster, Team Able Tech, even the head of the Atlantic Smart Port Flux Network, Network, that is led by Betai, by uh, is this, is a consortium of clusters, accelerators, policy uh, act that focus on one thing, creating an, uh, an innovation national system where ports act as blue economy hubs. What we are finding out, technologies that, all, that bring operational efficiency and environmental positive act for ports, but also they become blue business hubs for other sectors, multi sectors with things that we have. So, so, so this kind of uh, initiative that we have to dive into. Perfect. So, thank you so thank much. You so much. We, we start a bit later, we finalize uh, almost on time. So, thank you so much for your participation. I think we have your, 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 your
good group of people to discuss the collaboration. Uh, not too many people, but I hope the, 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 with good quality, like I would say. So enjoy, <laughs> enjoy the week. Uh, we have an amazing week ahead of us where we, we have to leverage these topics. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you.